Hello, today we're in Pandon Wood Harlow and it feels just a little spooky today. <coughs> I think maybe we should go and check it out, see what's going on. Okay, now that is strange. I think we better find the park wall and find out what's going on around here. Okay, well I found Samantha, she is our park warden. Now I've been walking around these woods, I must admit I got lost. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm a little spooked here today, there's witches, there's cobwebs, and yeah, I'm there's not surprised. all this scary makeup on you. What, what is going on? Is it a, a ghost invasion or have we got an event or something going on? Well, here? luckily we've got an event and Thank it's God. our Halloween day today. <laughs> um, we've got a pumpkin party in the day and then we've got spooky evening walks this evening. Spooky evening yeah. is, that, is that where you're going to walk people around the world? Yeah, we go around in the dark, it's all decorated with candles and we have sort of ghouls walking around in the dark and then we've got our party today. Scary. Yeah. Is, there, is, is, there any, I mean, is there any sort of a permutation of this wood being haunted? Because it's over 900 years old from my research. Yeah, it's a very ancient woodland. It's part of um, Epping Forest originally and um, so it goes back a long way and the centre itself has been here since the 1970s and there have been talks of it being a little bit haunted. Um, occasionally I sort of hear footsteps and go and have a look and there's no one there so it's, it's very possible. Maybe we'll find out tonight. <laughs> Yeah, well, finger, fingers crossed. I'm, I'm not coming in there with you. I, I, I'm a little scared of that, so I'm going to stick, Fair enough. <laughs> stick clear. Now, obviously, a lot of people know that, you know, Pond and Wood here in Hollow is a nature reserve. Yeah. What I, I must admit I didn't know is that you guys actually have events here as well. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's been a nature reserve for a long time, but we've only really been doing events um, for the past four years, really. Um, and we tend to do seasonal things, so Christmas crafts, Halloween days like today. We do a, a Father's Forest Survival Day as well. So well, just anything to get the community involved with, with the reserve, really. Well, it's certainly a good thing to be getting the community involved with the reserves. I mean, it is a beautiful one, and certainly big, as I mentioned, I've been getting lost about the last 15 yeah. minutes, <laughs> walking past all these witches and ghouls <laughs> and the scary things. I mean, is it, this very much sort of a family orientated yeah. event, or is there a specific age group that it's aimed at? We tend to, with every event we do, we do something for all ages. So from 0 to 90, you can just come down, and we have sort of informative things that people can just walk around and have a look at, and we always have loads of fun games that children can have a go at. Today we've got pumpkin carving, people can make wands and broomsticks, there's lots of craft stalls. So, so there's no witches around that could turn me into a toad Possibly or anything? Possibly not. Is, uh, <laughs> just got to watch my back Keep now. your eyes open. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely watching my back now. <laughs> now, as, as a, such an expansive woodland, I mean, it, do you get a lot of visitors here? Yeah, it really does vary with the season. Um, in the summer, we get a, a lot more than we do in the winter. Um, it does go very quiet in the winter, we're only open one day a week, um, and then half terms and school holidays. So events like this really just help to draw people in. Um, summer holidays go crazy, and then goes really quiet in the winter, but I mean, we get in there. Is it a sort of place you could come and have a picnic with your family? Yes, definitely. Yeah, when we're open at weekends, we just encourage people to come and have a walk around. They can bring their picnic in and just sit up in the woods somewhere and there's always sort of scavenger hunts and bug hunting for children to do all the time. I'm, I'm scared of bugs. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> there's lots of, of the them around. <laughs> I'll stick clear of the bug hunting. Okay, well I also understand that you have a author here today for us. Yes we do, Tracy Rolf is around somewhere. Excellent. Let's see if we can find her. I think her. she shall be our, our next person to, to find on our show. Brilliant. Okay, so Samantha, I shall let you go and uh, I should carry on speaking people. <laughs> yep. And no sneaking up behind me because I'm very oh, okay. jumpy. Okay, <laughs> try not to. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Lovely Samantha. to meet you. Lovely to meet you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Okay, well, that concludes our talk with Samantha, the park warden. Let's go find our author, shall we? Let's see what she has to say for us today. Okay, well, I'm here with author Tracy Rolfe, who is here today signing copies of her new book. The White Witch is, I'm so sorry, I'm going to get that wrong, Spitten, Spit on, Spitten, yeah. Spit on, and The Stone of Destiny. Now this is part three of the series, isn't it? It is indeed, yeah, I've written three books, um, I'm just currently writing the fourth book at the moment, and um, Spitten is actually Waltham Abbey, it's, it's where I come from, so the inspiration come from there, and we're connected to King Harold King in uh, Waltham Abbey, so... So it's not, not only is it a, a, a book that people can really get into it's yeah. also based on real places there's there's a yeah there's a lot of history behind it at the moment it's being reviewed by the National Historical Society 
um, because it, it, there's a lot of fact in there about the Battle of Hastings and, and King Harold, which I had to do about two years of research on because I wanted the book to be informative, like historically informative, but I've got witches at the Battle of Hastings on broomsticks, so <laughs> it's, it's a mixture between that, that fantasy would, and fiction. That would have been an interesting one for the bio tapestry, the old witches flying overhead. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could Definitely, have. yeah. Well, and the strange thing is, well, this, I say strange because when I was actually writing it, um, Waltham Abbey Museum had um, what you call it, a show uh, that day or uh, about the Bayo tapestry. So it was really good for me to go there and uh, actually look at, you know, uh, the display that they had there. So is, it, is, it good? is that is that what inspired you with this third book? Was that a big inspiration yeah, for this book? Yeah, I've always well, I've always been into history, but because, as I said, like Spitten is Waltham Abbey, and my heroine, my character Isabel, is a 13-year-old white witch, and her grandmother Lilith owns a witch's shop in this little village. Um, and in Waltham Abbey, we do actually have a real witch's shop there. So, so you, you sort of, you know, catching my <laughs> how it all came about, and also the local connection with King Harold. So I wanted to keep a local theme going. So, so I mean, it's certainly refreshing. I mean, is, is this a children's book, or is this a book for people of all ages? I well, I do obviously book signings throughout the country, and um, they are in Waterstones. Um, and when I do do my book signings. I do actually have adults, you know, that, so, that gravitate towards them as well. So, so it's not just a tale for one age group, it's a tale no, for all ages. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, they're, they're in the shops at 9 to 12, but I always, when people ask me the age group, I normally say 9 to 90. If you're into magical fantasy, you probably would, would love my books. And there's one burning question I've, I've been dying to ask, because I've been oh, walking God. around the woods here at Pond and Wooden Hollow. Okay. And there's plenty of witches around now. Yeah. What's the difference between a white witch and the dark kind? I mean, would a white witch turn me into a toad if I upset them? No, well, I don't, you know, there's, there's not really... There isn't white and, white and dark. There isn't. Um, but as a children's author, you've got to have a baddie. Uh, the main character in my first two books, who was the bad wizard, was a character called Carlad. And I talk about the fact that he works for the dark side, you know, so black and white, good and good and evil. I mean, is, is, is there a, a sort of a theme to the bad guys? I mean, are, is they, are they after anything specific or are they just big, mean, crush everything? <laughs> yeah, do that as well. Um, the, the first book, which is The White Witch of Spitten and the Serpent of Anata, which is, uh, which is that came out. This first one, yeah. Here. that came out in the shops in 2007. And you can see my character Isabel on the front there. And the Serpent of Anata is an ancient relic. And the bad wizard in that book is called, let's say, Carlad. He wants to find the ancient relic. So, yeah, so there is, um, you know, a race between him and Isabel. So he wants to find this relic in that so particular book. So it's the age old challenge of good versus yeah, evil. Yeah, get yeah, to yeah. The relic, and gets good to always wins. And <laughs> yeah, so good, good has to win, otherwise, the world would be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, it has to. But they're very, they're very magical. And um, so I always put lots of research into my books, especially on the first one where I've never been to Egypt. So I did do lots of research on, you know, on Egypt. I mean, what would you what would you like to see to happen to these books? Then, I mean, is, is there an overall aim for this series? My dream, I mean, this is all my dream is all, already taking fruition. But my dream would ultimately would be for them to be put onto film. I mean, yeah, I, I would certainly. That's my biggest these. dream. It, when these become film, I will be the first in the line of the Thank cinema. Thank you. You're going to so go for one of the characters, like a, a wizard or a bad mm. wizard or a good wizard. I think if I play characters, I'd be a bad, I'd be a bad <laughs> wizard. I like being a bad guy. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think yeah. that wraps up today, so we're about out of time. Thank you so much for Thank talking you. to us. Thank and you, it's been a pleasure. Our last question for you today is, if you, if you want to get a copy of your book, where can we go to get it? You can, they're all over the internet, so you can Google me um, and the books on the internet. I do have my personal website, 
also Amazon um, is where they're actually are available on Kindle as well because you know it, you know the new technology now the new age is all about iTunes and Kindle so you can download them as well Excellent. and I do have a Facebook page as well so people can check out what I'm doing and where, well, we'll where my books are We'll be saying to have a look online, so they look up your website and look Thank out for my books. We're we'll looking forward to the fourth in series. Thank you, it's a pleasure Thank you to so meet much you. for your time today. It's been an absolute honour. Thank you. Can I get a signed book before I go? Yes, you certainly can, as, and, and you, as long as you go for the part when they, you know, when they're going to film. I'm, I'm a little scared now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you kindly. Thank you. This has been Kevin for Harlow TV. Thank you so much for joining us today in this spooky woodland here at Pandon Wood in Harlow. I'm going to head home now before I...